these lessons drawn from Dale Carnegie's timeless advice offers practical insights and strategies for building successful relationships, fostering effective communication and achieving personal and professional growth. By applying these principles in our interactions with others, we can cultivate stronger connections, influence them positively and lead more fulfilling lives. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's get started. Lesson 1. Avoid criticism. As the quote says, any fool can criticize, condemn and complain and most fools do. Criticism rarely leads to positive outcomes in interpersonal interactions. Instead of focusing on what others are doing wrong, it's more constructive to offer feedback or find solutions to problems. Criticizing others can alienate them and hinder effective communication. By refraining from criticism and adopting a more sympathetic approach, we can foster better relationships and promote personal growth. Lesson 2. Seek understanding, not arguments. As the quote goes, the only way to get the best of an argument is to avoid it. Ta-da! Obviously. Now, engaging in arguments often escalates conflicts and it damages relationships. Rather than trying to prove ourselves right, it's more productive to seek understanding and find common ground by emphasizing with others and understanding their perspectives and focusing on areas of agreement, we can resolve conflicts quickly and we can keep the harmony in our interactions. So try to seek understanding, not arguments. Lesson 3. Show genuine interest in others. Again, as the quote goes in the book, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Showing genuine interest in others' lives and experiences is key to building strong relationships. When we actively listen to others and show empathy, we demonstrate that we value and respect them. And this fosters trust and relationships, which lays the foundation for meaningful connections and mutual respect. Lesson 4. Talk about others' interests. Talk to someone about themselves and they will listen for hours. Because people are naturally drawn to conversations about their interests and experiences. By engaging in discussions that revolve around others' passions, we can create positive emotional connections and foster a sense of belonging. And this demonstrates that we care about their well-being and strengthens our relationships with them. Lesson 5. Smile and make a good first impression. As the quote goes, actions speak louder than words and a smile says, I like you. You make me happy. I am glad to see you. A warm smile is a powerful tool for making a good first impression. It conveys friendliness, openness and positivity, instantly putting others at ease. By smiling genuinely, we can create a welcoming atmosphere and set the stage for 
successful interactions and relationships. Lesson 6. Remember people's names. As the quote goes again, remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest sound in any language. Addressing individuals by their names shows respect and that you have acknowledged them and that makes them feel valued and appreciated. Remembering and using people's names in conversations demonstrates that we care about them as individuals and this makes our interpersonal connections much stronger and fosters a sense of trust and understanding. Lesson 7. Again, avoid arguments, but this time win people over. The only way on earth to influence other people is to talk about what they want and show them how to get it. Arguing rarely leads to positive outcomes. Instead of trying to prove ourselves right, we should focus on understanding others' perspectives and finding common ground by aligning our messages with others' interests and desires, we can make our ideas more compelling and persuasive, ultimately winning them over to our way of thinking. Lesson 8. Respect others' opinions. Show respect for the other person's opinion. Never say you're wrong. Respecting others' opinions, even when they differ from our own, is fundamental to effective communication. By validating their viewpoints and acknowledging their right to hold them, we demonstrate empathy and foster mutual respect. This creates a more beautiful environment for constructive dialogue and relationships. Lesson 9. Admit your mistakes gracefully. If you are going to prove anything, don't let anybody know it. Do it so subtly, so silently, that no one will feel that you are doing it. Admitting our mistakes and taking responsibility for our actions requires humility and honesty. Rather than denying or covering up our errors, we should acknowledge them openly and seek to rectify them. This demonstrates that you are true to yourself and it will earn the respect and trust of others which ultimately strengthens your relationship with them because now you are seen as a trustworthy, honest person. Lesson 10. Begin with praise and appreciation. Beginning with praise is like the dentist who begins his work with Novocaine. <laughs> the patient still gets a drilling, but the Novocaine is pain-killing Starting interactions with praise and appreciation creates a positive atmosphere. It creates a positive environment and sets a constructive tone. When we acknowledge others, when we acknowledge their strengths and accomplishments, we make them feel valued and respected. And this makes them receptive to our ideas and suggestions. If we praise and appreciate others, they will appreciate our thoughts and our ideas because this builds goodwill 
and facilitates more productive communication and collaboration. Lesson 11. Align messages with others' interests. The only way on earth to influence other people is to talk about what they want and show them how to get it. Tailoring our messages to align with others' interests and desires makes them more compelling and persuasive. When we show how our proposals benefit them and address their needs and concerns, we increase the likelihood of acceptance and cooperation. This creates win-win outcomes and strengthens our relationships with others. Lesson 12. Handle complaints with understanding. Once again, I will repeat the quote, but I will repeat some, I will say something that I did not say when I first said it. Any fool can criticize, condemn and complain, and most fools do, but it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. Handling complaints with empathy and understanding fosters trust and goodwill in our relationships with others rather than reacting defensively or dismissively we should listen with full attention to their concerns and seek mutually acceptable solutions because this demonstrates that we value their feedback and care about their satisfaction which ultimately keeps harmony and promotes positive interactions.